Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. For me, an exciting software update is when it enables you to do something with your devices which you couldn't before. For macOS Sequoia, iPhone mirroring is one of those new enablements. It sounds like a super simple and straightforward feature to be able to remotely operate your iPhone from your Mac, yet it's surprisingly more intricate than it seems. Hence, these 20 things you should know about iPhone mirroring in macOS Sequoia. A quick disclaimer beforehand that all my coverage in this video is based on the public beta of macOS Sequoia and also iOS 18. So it's possible that things may still change, but for now, first thing you need to know is your iPhone makes a distinction when it's being accessed from a Mac. And as such, certain security settings like Face ID and passcode simply become unavailable. And by that, I mean the menu item for Face ID and passcode literally do not appear in the settings app when you're accessing it via iPhone mirroring. When you do come across an instance where Face ID is required, it's very seamless when it comes to authentication prompts from within iOS. Just use Touch ID on your Mac to access a hidden album or open a locked app. Within certain other apps, however, for example, banking or finance apps, which lets you Face ID to log in, it will currently ask you to log in with your password instead. iPhone mirroring also seems to disable any attempts to use Apple Pay. To test this out, I tried buying a bag of rocks online and paying for it using Apple Pay. I guess if you ever wonder who on earth buys rocks online? Shipping costed more than the actual rocks, by the way. The moment I tried to check out using Apple Pay, it just instantly rejects it. When I tried the exact same thing physically on the iPhone itself, the payment went right through. Presumably for privacy and safety, the camera and microphone off the connected iPhone will also be disabled when the iPhone mirroring is active. This does also mean any features which require the camera will also be unavailable, but to be fair, you do kind of need to be holding your iPhone to be pointing the camera anyway iPhone mirroring seems to be aware of which way you should be holding your iPhone though, because it automatically rotates when you open an app that's meant to be viewed horizontally, or quite intelligently, enter horizontal mode as you full screen a YouTube video and pop back to vertical once you exit full screen view. But you really want to go back to full screen for me to tell you about Squarespace Blueprint. It's an incredibly powerful guided design tool to help you come up with a catchy design using the help of AI. Unlike choosing from a template, this gives you a completely personalized design from color schemes to fonts, and it even lets you tailor the tone of the copywriting that's generated. Your website is automatically optimized for every device. It's also got powerful SEO tools built in to help your site show up more often to more people and in exactly the way you want. Of course, you may want to further customize your site down the line, and with Squarespace's next-gen website editor called Fluid Engine, you can intuitively customize every little design detail with drag-and-drop technology for both desktop and mobile. With your Squarespace website, you can sell anything from products to content to time. Payments are flexible and seamless for your customers, letting you accept credit cards, PayPal, and Apple Pay, or even offer the option to pay later using Afterpay and Clearpay in eligible countries. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash ZYCheng to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. When you're trying to use a touchscreen interface from a mouse and keyboard, some gestures can understandably be tricky. Swiping up to go home, pulling up the app switcher, and swiping down for spotlight are three such gestures. You'll instead be accessing these via the menu bar under the view tab, or via keyboard shortcuts commands 1, 2, and 3, or these two buttons in the corner of the window for home and app switcher. Notably, the control center is not accessible via iPhone mirroring. Any audio which gets played during iPhone mirroring will be routed so it plays only through your Mac. That means your iPhone will not be making any sounds as you're watching Reels and TikToks played through your iPhone on your Mac. Exceptions will apply to alerts, alarms, and ringtones, which will always be played through the iPhone speakers even if mirroring is active. Your iPhone's notifications can also be delivered directly to your Mac's notification center. Whenever there's text input involved, the on-screen keyboard does not spring up when in iPhone mirroring, which grants you a somewhat uncommon full-screen typing experience in iOS. If you're a proud owner of multiple iPhones, you'd probably like to choose which iPhone gets summoned every time you fire up iPhone mirroring on your Mac. You can do so within your Mac's system settings under the Desktop and Dock tab, scroll down to Widgets, and choose your iPhone from there. 
In terms of how far away you'll be able to access your iPhone from, the short answer is your iPhone actually needs to be somewhat nearby because it appears to be using a peer-to-peer -peer connection between your iPhone and Mac. For iPhone mirroring to happen, they don't have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. In fact, they don't even need to be connected to the internet. Even if they're on the same Wi-Fi network, the connection can get choppy if there's too much distance between the two devices. I believe it's kind of like AirDrop. No internet connection required, devices need to be within close-ish range, so if the devices are close enough to AirDrop from, they should be close enough for iPhone mirroring. Even though iPhone mirroring doesn't require internet connection, it won't work if your device is in airplane mode. One way to prematurely end your iPhone mirroring session is by opening up the settings app and enabling airplane mode remotely. This will then be the last thing you see. As of the current beta version, it is possible to do that via iPhone mirroring, so maybe don't do that. What isn't available yet in the current public beta is the ability to drag and drop photos or videos between iPhone and Mac. However, thanks to Universal Clipboard, you can at least copy and paste photos between Mac and iPhone with a mirroring session open. It's also possible to initiate AirDrop remotely through iPhone mirroring. I believe this is the only time I've seen an iPhone able to send and receive AirDrops when the display is off. One neat little detail is how you won't be offered the handoff icon in the dock when you open a handoffable app through iPhone mirroring. It will only show up if the iPhone is used while the app is open. If I've been locked out of Face ID on my iPhone, for example, right after a reboot, or I've triggered the power down screen, it will not be possible to remotely connect to my iPhone. In this case, I'll have to physically unlock my iPhone once with my passcode before it's possible to link up over iPhone mirroring again. One very valid concern, however, is if, say, I let someone use my Mac, they might use iPhone mirroring to gain access to my iPhone without my consent. And regarding that, I think Apple's done a great job at preventing that from happening, as well as letting me know if my iPhone's been accessed. It's possible to set up iPhone mirroring so that Touch ID or my macOS password is required every time it connects to my iPhone. Between the mirroring that's happening on my Mac and the actual iPhone itself, the physical phone will always have user priority. The moment you pick up and unlock your iPhone, the mirrored session on Mac will end. In other words, nobody can be using your iPhone if you're using it. Only when the iPhone's locked will it be possible to access it via iPhone mirroring. That being said, during an active iPhone mirroring session, checking the lock screen or pulling down the control center do not seem to interrupt it. As long as your iPhone is actively being mirrored to a Mac, there will be a notification being continuously displayed on your lock screen to let you know that it is in use. The next time you pick up your iPhone and unlock it, a message will also pop out letting you know that your phone was last used from a Mac. On your iPhone, if you go to Settings, General, AirPlay and Continuity, then tap on iPhone mirroring, it will show you which device used your iPhone how long ago and for how long. So there you have 20 things you now know about using your iPhone from your Mac. My rocks arrived. Never been more excited. One bag of rocks. Powdery ones too.